Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashton. I'm Jonathan. And along with our son, Jack, we are the Black Forest family. You know, a few videos back, we did a comparison of driving in Germany to the United States. And there was one big factor there that we kind of left out, mainly because we thought this required its own dedicated video. Yeah, and that's the price of fuel. There's no denying it. If you've driven or even just watched the news anytime in the last couple of months, you're probably well aware of the fact that fuel prices have skyrocketed. Yeah, and however, anytime the gas prices run out of control, everybody comes out of the woodwork and tries to finger point exactly what was the single cause of this price <laughs> increase. Yeah, and you know, all of that had us wondering, what exactly are the big factors behind what you pay at the pump? And just how different is it between what Americans pay versus what Germans pay? So in today's video, we're gonna be covering the following topics. We'll give you the actual prices of gasoline and diesel in both Germany and the US. Then we will break down what's behind those costs from the cost of oil to the taxes imposed in both countries. But we don't just wanna stop there. We kept digging to explore where that oil comes from and how it affects modern geopolitical events. And last but not least, we talk about gasoline pricing and the effect on purchasing and infrastructure. After all, we figured that it's important to not just talk about what you pay, but also what that money and tax dollars actually goes towards and what it ultimately means for the quality of life and the quality of the roads for the people who drive there. All right, so here we go. Everybody hold on to your wallets because I'm sure this is gonna shock quite a few of you. Absolutely. So before we break down what goes into the costs of fuel, it's very important for us to bring out the cost of fuel today as we're filming this video as a baseline for our analysis. Yeah, so the website that we use, it updates weekly. So at the time that we're recording this video, the latest data we have is from Monday, April 4th. And according to globalpetrolprices.com, the current average price for 95 octane fuel in Germany is one euro and 99 cents per liter, or in US dollars per gallon, that comes out to $8 and 27 cents, again, USD per gallon. So by contrast, in the United States, the same type of gasoline costs $4.58 per gallon, or in euros a liter, about one euro and 10 cents. So yeah, we're basically paying just shy of double for the same unleaded gasoline here in Germany compared to the United States. Yeah, and the trend is about the same for diesel. So here in Germany, we're paying about two euros and five cents per liter. And for our American viewers, it is $8.54 per gallon. And those prices in the United States, well, similarly, they're a lot lower than what we pay in Germany. Specifically, US diesel prices are roughly $5.08 per gallon. And that comes out in euros per liter to about a euro 22 cents. So here once again, we pay just shy of double. Not quite, but close. But you know, ultimately this conversation about gas prices between Germany and the United States actually has more in common than it does less in common. Yeah, and I guess specifically, while that might not necessarily be in price, it definitely, they do share a lot in common when it comes to general market trends like inflation and market volatility. So let's explore. So no matter whether you live in Germany or the United States, these fuel costs have always been variable in good times and bad times. I mean, pandemics, wars, recessions, these are nothing new. So in addition to these global events, inflation has also played a pretty strong role in the ongoing increase of fuel prices. Yeah, so while the war in Ukraine, and again, the subsequent rise in fuel prices, well, while that's not necessarily something new, it actually brings up a really good point because probably one of the first major global oil crises that not only shaped the modern oil production and oil trade, 
but also oil tax policy in countries across the globe. It occurred during the fuel crisis in the mid-1970s. So in the past, we've talked a bit about heating oil for houses, and we kind of want to go back into this again and examine oil costs as they are for automobiles. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, right now, as the world is facing sanctions on Russian oil, as well as lower overall output by OPEC, we thought we should do a little comparison over time just to help give some perspective. So for example, according to the US Department of Energy, the price of a gallon of gasoline in 1975 was 53 cents per gallon. However, I'm sure you're all aware that the purchasing power of a dollar in 1975 dollars is quite a bit different than what we have today in 2022. So adjusted for inflation, that gallon of gasoline that cost 53 cents in 1975 would actually cost $5 and three cents in today's US dollars. So although we did hit historic highs recently for a gallon of gasoline for the absolute dollar, when it's actually adjusted for inflation, these prices aren't anything new to Americans, and at least not yet. Yeah, exactly. But you know, this also had us wondering, what about Germany? Studies regularly show that prices for petrol or gasoline and diesel at gas stations in Germany generally display the same trends as wholesale prices for fuels on the Rotterdam oil market. And in the US, Prices also generally reflect the wholesale cost of fuel as well. And so why do we in Germany have to pay nearly double the price than the United States? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier on in this video, the price that you pay at the pump, well, it's going to vary from state to state and even within the state in the United States. And that's because taxes are just different depending on where you live. Yeah, exactly. So in the United States, gas prices can vary greatly depending on the region <laughs> that you're in. But also in Germany, gas prices can vary somewhat depending on your region. So while we don't have time to break down every single US state, we thought that maybe it would be helpful to examine the state of California, because statistically, that's where you're gonna find the highest prices in the United States. So as of today, the day that we're filming this episode, which is uh, Wednesday, April 6, 2022, according to the Automobile Association of America, the cost of regular unleaded gasoline in California is $5.82 which is considerably higher than the $4.16 average in the United States. However, you can see that there are some considerable differences within certain areas or counties. But what makes up the price per gallon of gasoline in California? Well, it's actually really interesting. Yeah, so for this next information, we actually headed over to the California Energy Commission to learn more. Now granted, their data is only updated every seven to 10 days, so we don't have today's actual price of gasoline. We're working off of the price from March 28th. But to be quite honest, there's only a few cent difference there, so we still found this to be extremely relevant. The first thing you'll see is the average price from 13 unbranded and 13 branded wholesale prices at various wholesale fuel loading racks around the state. Now, for reference, branded gasoline refers to fuel that's sold under a brand name, like BP, Shell, Exxon, Chevron, Valero, etc. Unbranded gasoline is not associated with a specific brand name, so you'll mostly find these at like Costco and Safeway and Sam's Club. Next is distribution costs, marketing costs, and profits. Well, this is pretty straightforward. It's the cost associated with the distribution from the terminals to the stations and the retailing of gasoline. Then there's the crude oil cost, which the price here reflects the daily market price of Alaska North Slope crude oil, which is used as a proxy for this composite crude oil acquisition cost for California refineries. Next is the refinery costs and profits. And yeah, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. These are the costs associated with refining, crude oil processing, product shipment, storage, oil spill fees, depreciation, et cetera, et cetera. Next is the state underground storage tank fee, which is currently two cents per gallon. Next is the state and local sales tax. This is gonna vary wildly depending on where you are in California, but on average, this is 2.25%. Next is the state excise tax, 
which in California is 51.1 cents per gallon. And finally, the federal excise tax, which is 18.4 cents per gallon. Now, despite prices being high in California, in Germany, things can be quite different. Yeah, so while I really hope this doesn't come off as sounding like mean or unsympathetic, but if I'm gonna be honest for our American friends and family, when we hear you guys complain about the cost of fuel as we sit here in Germany, well, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to sympathize when we pay almost double of what you pay. Uh, <laughs> Even when it's not a <laughs> fuel crisis, it's still double. <laughs> right, it's it's still double, it still hurts. And, and I get it, it mostly hurts low income families and we really do sympathize with that. But yeah, you guys have it pretty good by global standards. Yeah, $5 per gallon sounds quite nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to what we pay currently, absolutely. As you can see from this graphic, the actual cost of the product makes up considerably less percentage wise in terms of what you actually pay in Germany. Remember, the actual costs are all the costs associated with the procurement price for crude oil, as well as the costs for transport, further processing, storage, administration, and distribution. Add to this the CO2 taxes paid by the oil companies and their profits. Now, we weren't able to break this down further like we could thanks to the California Energy Commission data. However, I wanted to briefly say that if you were to add up the cost of distribution costs, marketing costs, and profits, crude oil costs, refinery costs and profit, as well as the state underground storage tank fee, basically everything but taxes. This amounts to approximately 86% of the overall cost of what you pay at the pump in California. However, in Germany, the actual cost of the product as of April 2022, because again, prices shift, well, it makes up roughly half of the cost you actually pay at the pump. And that's because the government tax office will take a big bite out of refueling. Taxes in Germany account for around 39% of the fuel bill for diesel and about 48% for gasoline. But here's the thing, it is very unlikely that the state is also profiting from the high fuel costs. This is because unlike in the United States, the energy tax rate is fixed and doesn't fluctuate with fuel price. For diesel, it's 47.04 cents. For gasoline or benzene, 65.45 cents per liter. And as you can see from this graphic, to facilitate and foster cross-border trade and to prevent significant competitive distortions, the European Union requires EU countries to levy a minimum excise duty of at least 36 cents per liter. As today's map shows, only Bulgaria and Hungary stick to this minimum rate while all other EU countries opt to levy a higher excise duty on gas. And in Germany, the gasoline tax amounts to around 30% of the total cost per liter. And that's again, based off of today's fuel cost. And because tax is a fixed amount, this percentage may fluctuate. And keep in mind that diesel fuel is generally taxed at a lower rate. The 19% VAT must be added onto that, but that still means the total tax levy is only about half of the total price per liter, but considerably higher than the US percentage. So the long story short is that here in Germany, not only do we pay slightly more for the wholesale price of gasoline, but we also pay significantly more taxes, which is why we pay again, just shy of double of what they pay per gallon of gasoline in the United States. So that leads us to the next very popular question. <laughs> yeah. Where is the oil that is used to make fuel coming from? So in the United States, there's a lot of noise and misinformation floating around about oil, yeah. where it comes from, what it has to do with our oil reserves, and about America's energy independence. Yeah, and that's actually quite interesting, I think, because what I found really interesting while doing the research for this video is that actually today in 2022, we're producing in the United States just as much oil as we were in 2019 when we were touted as energy independent by our former president. So that actually really had me wondering, you know, as an American speaking here, um, if we're producing just as much oil, 
And by the way, the US is the world's largest producer of oil, then what the heck is up with all of these rising gas prices, right? That's because oil is traded on the global market and the United States has not yet reached net exporter status. Well, not for crude oil specifically. Right. Since Congress lifted the ban on oil exports in 2015, all American drilled oil and some of our natural gas has been priced on the international market. Therefore, global market prices, not our abundance of domestic fossil fuels, set the price for oil and gasoline in the United States. And therefore, it's kind of somewhat unsurprising that this oil that is bought and sold on the global market and that same oil that's then refined down into gasoline and pumped into your vehicle, well, it's actually gonna come from a lot of different places depending on where you live. As you can see from this map, of the 7.86 million barrels per day in the United States imported in 2020, the majority came from its North American neighbors, Canada, with about 4.13 million barrels, and then Mexico with 750, thousand barrels. But imports coming from outside North America are significant. Russia, with 540,000 barrels a day, was the top non-continental contributor. Roughly 11% of the imports came collectively from the OPEC countries, including 520,000 barrels from Saudi Arabia. But the US exports petroleum too, and I found it to be super interesting that actually in 2020, for the very first time since 1949, the US actually exported more than it imported to the tune of 635,000 barrels per day more. Of the 8.5 million barrels per day exported in 2020, Mexico and Canada reappear as the largest partners again each receiving about a million barrels per day from the United States. China was the third largest recipient with 720,000 barrels a day. Japan and India round out the top five, receiving about half a million barrels per day each. In 2021, the United States consumed about 19.78 million barrels of petroleum per day, or about 7.22 billion barrels of petroleum overall. But now I was curious, how much of the oil that Americans consume actually comes from America? And I actually went over to the US Department of Energy's website to try to figure this out and was surprised to learn that we really don't know. According to the EIA, they state that, quote, the EIA is not able to determine precisely how much of the crude oil exported from the United States is produced in the United States, because some of the exported crude oil may have originally been imported from other countries, placed into storage, and then re-exported. And the same goes for the oil that we use. It all gets exported and imported and then mixed together and then refined. So I don't know, I just found it really interesting that I think a lot of Americans would wonder how much of what we use do we actually produce? And it's actually not that straightforward. All right, so now let's switch over to Germany and see what things are like in this neck of the woods. In Germany, oil consumption peaked at the end of the 1970s, but it is still Germany's most important primary energy source. Oil covered 31.8% of the country's primary energy use in 2021. Oil was mostly used as a transportation fuel and only a small fraction was used for power production. And according to the Federal Institute for Geosciences and Natural Resources, or the BGR, about 98% of Germany's primary mineral oil consumption has to be imported in 2020. The country's domestic crude oil output from 49 oil fields amounted to only 1.9 million tons that year. We're just not an oil rich country here in Germany from a geological standpoint. Because we don't make a whole lot, it's very important for us to look at where Germany imports this crude oil from. In 2021, Germany imported 81 million tons of crude oil. And Russia was by far the largest supplier in 2021, delivering 34.1%. The United States provided 12.5%, Kazakhstan 9.8%, Norway 9.6%. In total, 30 countries supplied crude oil to Germany. So as you can imagine, the current war in Ukraine has put Germany in a pretty, well, tough spot, right? On the one hand, they're supplying Ukraine with ammunitions and weapons. 
But on the other hand, they don't exactly want to be seen feeding into the Russian war machine by paying them for this significant amount of crude oil. But yeah, um, we're not going to get into politics here. It is not our place. So we're just going to serve up straight facts. Chancellor Olaf Scholz and his government maintained that Germany will continue to buy billions of dollars worth of natural gas and oil from Russia each week for the foreseeable future to keep German car companies and factories operating at full throttle. Even though critics in Ukraine and the West argue that the $220 million Germany sends to Moscow every day for Russian energy is being used, at least indirectly, to finance its war against Ukraine. And well, this has actually gotten them some pretty harsh criticism. Lithuania announced just this past Sunday that it has banned Russian energy imports while Poland and Slovakia, among others, have called for speedy action. The United States said in early March that it had stopped all Russian oil and energy imports in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But to be fair, Germany's explanation is quite businesslike in that it couldn't possibly stop importing Russian gas, not at least until later this year, because it would risk throwing the entire economy into a giant recession. So in the end, instead of outright banning Russian oil and gas, German government leaders are mulling options to conserve energy. The first, introducing speed limits on the Autobahn. <laughs> the second, extending the life of the three nuclear plants that are still operational, and then investing again in coal energy. Now, to be fair, oil is actually easier to replace than natural gas. Theoretically, other countries could start shipping more of its oil to Europe to start making up for this difference. But that's a lot of oil to replace. And this could actually end up driving up prices even more because it would take longer to actually transport it here. Okay, I personally think that we have dove down the rabbit hole of the global oil industry enough for one video. So instead, for this last section, I actually wanted to turn back and talk again about the taxes that we pay as part of what we pay at the pump. And, you know, that's actually quite interesting, I think, because those taxes in one way or another actually do affect purchasing trends and the overall quality of the infrastructure. Yeah, you know, in the United States, gas taxes are levied in a variety of ways, including per gallon excise taxes collected at the pump, excise taxes imposed on wholesalers, and sales taxes that apply to purchase of gasoline. The American Petroleum Institute accounts for these different approaches when it calculates the average tax rate on a gallon of gas in each state. These rates vary wildly from state to state and can be seen in the map on the screen. Now this map is a little bit old, it's from July 2021, but it still is pretty accurate. California pumps out the highest state gas tax rate at 66.98 cents per gallon, followed by Illinois, which is 59.5 cents per gallon and then Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and so on. The lowest state gas tax rates can be found in Alaska at just 14.98 cents per gallon, followed by Missouri, where we went to college, at 17.42 cents per gallon, and then Mississippi at 18.79 cents per gallon. Now, don't get me wrong, while I think there are few taxpayers out there that are cheerleading all of these wonderful taxes that are yeah. levied on their gallon of gas, you know, the system actually does embody the benefits principle of taxation pretty well. This public finance concept holds that the taxes a person pays should relate to the government services that a person receives. So in general, you know, drivers on the road should benefit from the taxes that they pay in gas, whether that's on road maintenance or road repair. Now, we realize that this isn't like 100% of the case that the taxes you pay on gas directly go to the road, but, you know, mostly, mostly. Yeah, but I mean, it does actually connect the driver to the road that they're on, and it does sort of encourage, um, you know, better road use. You know, theoretically, it can the reduce, theoretically, theoretically. <laughs> can reduce congestion and also overuse and damage to the roads that you're on. 
However, the federal government and many states have not indexed their specific rates for inflation, leading the real value of gas tax revenue to fall behind infrastructure spending needs across the country. Today, general taxes paid by all taxpayers cover nearly as much of the cost of building and maintaining highways as the gas tax and other fees paid by drivers. So, you know, honestly, I feel like that's why in part that American roads and its overall highway infrastructure is so poor compared to Germany. Yeah, and if you've spent any time driving in Germany as an American, it is hard not to notice how good the road systems are. Again, by comparison, I like to say the roads are just glass. Like they're so smooth. They're so nice here. And and yeah, like I get it. We pay a lot per liter of petrol here in Germany. We do. We pay a lot of taxes. But it is nice to see that all of those taxes have led to a much nicer overall infrastructure and actually has changed consumer purchasing behavior. For one, when gas prices are so high, you are more likely to drive smaller, more fuel-efficient cars, in addition to taking public transit and making investments in improving the public transit infrastructure, something which is a positive step for the environment. But on a more practical level, all of those taxes go towards the maintenance and upkeep of the roads, the bridges, and the tunnels, again, making for an overall much nicer and safer driving experience. Okay, so consider this. In America, a 2021 report by the American Road and Transportation Builders Association has found that 220,000 bridges, which is over one third of American total stock, need repair and 79,500 need to be replaced. Yeah, and by contrast, here in Germany, according to Germany's federal statistical office, De Statis, they published its latest figures in 2021 on the condition and maintenance costs of the nation's bridges, and they found that about only one in 10 need repair. Okay, so now sure, poor road condition is subjective, <laughs> but for us being in Germany from the United States, it is a night and day difference on average. Yeah, absolutely. It's It's been a really wonderful driving experience. And I guess while I maybe would say that whenever construction is done on the roads in Germany, it seems to take like a decade to complete it. When it's done, it's, it's, done, it's top notch. It's done properly. It's done correctly. In the correct amount of time. <laughs> but I have to say too, cycling in Germany, I know I'm kind of going off here from automotive and fuel prices, but the road quality makes cycling much safer. You don't have to merge out in traffic to avoid a pothole. No. It is always, well not always, most of the time, very smooth sailing and safer for everybody on a bicycle too. All right guys, so this is the point in the video where we actually ask you a question to let us know down in the comments. Well, a couple of questions actually, and the first one is, how do you feel about the current state of gas prices where you live? Please let us know down in the comments and include where you're from and what the current price per gallon or per liter of gas or benzene or diesel is in your area. Yeah, the second question is, how has this changed your purchasing habits? Are you going to a gas powered car now from a diesel because the prices have come down a little bit? Or are you actually going to a diesel because they're generally more efficient? than a gas, or are you just saying enough of this, I'm going straight to a full electric car? Yeah, or even so, have these rising gas prices actually encouraged you to take more public transit options? Ride your bike. Or ride your bike, exactly. Again, guys, please let us know down in the comment section. We always love hearing from you. All right, so that wraps up today's video. And as usual, if you liked what you saw today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this Bob. Cheers.